May June 2021, Paper 2, Wearing 2. Question 1. Group 2 metals combine with uh, bromine to form a crystalline solid MBr2. Okay, after that, uh, silver nitrate added to the solution of MBr2, a precipitate form. So group 2 bromide is soluble. When the silver nitrate added, silver will form precipitate with bromide. So the precipitate is the silver bromide and the color is cream precipitate. So, so because it's us, formula and the color. So it's AGBR and cream precipitate. Complete the equation to represent the reactions between the MBR2 and the silver nitrate. Okay, this one is very easy. You just try to form the products. Okay, M with the nitrate from the salt and the silver with the bromide from silver bromide. Balance it, you get this equation. A 0 0.25 gram of pure MBR2 it contains 8.415 times 10 power negative 4 mole of MBr2. Calculate the relative formula mass of the MBr2. And after that, identify M. Okay, so first, you need to calculate the molar mass based on the moles and the grams that given. So we know that moles equal to mass over molar mass. To get the molar mass, we use the mass over the mole. Okay, so the mass over the mole, you get 297.1. Okay, 297.1 is the mass of MBr2, the, the salt. Now, we can get the mass of the metals easily because we know that inside the salt, it has two bromine. We just need to use the molar mass that calculated just now minus 2 times the uh, molar mass of bromine so it's 2 times 79.9 so you get the mass of the metal M is 137.3 which is very okay therefore molar mass is this and the M is very a sample of MBr2 dissolved in water Chlorine gas then bubble into the solution. Okay, so we know that uh, these reactions will happen. The chlorine it will displace the bromide uh, from the solution. The chlorine itself will get reduced, and the bromide will oxidize to bromine. Uh, the type of reaction is better to uh, mention or to put displacement. Even though this is a redox reaction. Uh, the better answer is displacement. Okay, so uh, for part one again, uh, describe the observations for this reaction very easy. Uh, initially, the solution is uh, is uh, because bromide is colorless. So when the bromines form, so this bromine will form the uh, orange solution, the bromine water. So it turns from colorless to orange. Okay. The type again is displacement. Okay. Compound Y is a pure insoluble solid which has halide ion. A single reagent is added directly to the Y and to determine the halide ion that present. Okay. Identify the reagent that used. Okay. Very easy because it's halide. So we know that all the halides, uh, the salt with halides, it will react with concentrated H2SO4. Okay, so the reagent that we can use is concentrated H2SO4. Okay, refer to this equation. When there is a bromide in the salt, so this bromide will react with the H2SO4 and this reaction is the acid-base reaction. 
H2SO4 is the acid, acid because it donates one proton to the bromide to form HBr and then it will form HSO4 negative so means the bromide now is based so it's an acid base reaction and after that the HBr form will further react with H2SO4 uh, then the bromide now is formed bromine the SO4 2 negative form SO2 so this is a redox reaction okay, which the H2SO4 is oxidizing agent it can oxidize the bromide to bromine Okay, so what you see is uh, because uh, all this observation, the color is more obvious. So we know that when we add concentrated H2SO4, the HBr will react with H2SO4 from bromine. So you see brown gas. So this is the observations that you will see. Okay, part F. Separate one gram samples of three different magnesium salt are tested in order to identify the anion that present okay so we have a few anions now we have carbonate nitrate and oxide okay explain how the action of heat is used to identify all this sample with different anions okay it's very easy first you need to understand Magnesium oxide is highly stable. When we try to heat magnesium oxide, actually is no change. Means it still remains as oxide. Okay, we know that the carbonate or group 2 carbonate and nitrate they will decompose. That's why okay, the first thing you will see is <clears throat> the magnesium nitrate after it decompose, okay, it will form NO2 gas. Magnesium carbonate after it decomposes it will form CO2. Okay, so therefore, here when you try to heat the first two compounds, both of these carbonate and nitrate compounds will decompose. Okay, then the gas that release uh, we can identify the compound. How? Because after heating both they will form magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is a residue. We can compare the mass of the residue with the mass of the carbonate and nitrate used. Compare their ratio, we will know which compound is it. So that's why we can use uh, the mass of residue. So again, a gas will be released and we can identify the compound using the mass of residue and the mass must be less than 1 gram because the gas released, so it will have mass loss. So we compare the residue, the mass of residue with the mass of the sample we use and we will know what is the compound either it's a carbonate or nitrate and another observation that we can distinguish between the magnesium nitrate and carbonate is when magnesium nitrate decomposes it will form NO2 gas brown gas so when you see brown gas means that one is nitrate and of course when you heat the solid the mass is still 1 gram, no change, so it must be magnesium oxide. Uh, this is how we uh, test and distinguish the three compounds. Okay, part 2. Complete the electron configuration of the magnesium cation present in this salt. Okay, um, first you need to know magnesium itself is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and it's as magnesium cation so means the valence electrons will be removed so the 3s2 gone right then it will just form 1s2 2s2 2p6 
That's the answer. Okay, part G. A sample of magnesium carbonate is distinguished from the sample of magnesium hydroxide by adding a small amount of hexia. Okay, state one similarity and one difference between these two reactions. Okay, very easy. As you can see in the question, both compound is solid. When we add HCl, HCl will, will react with these two solid, and these two solid will dissolve. Okay, therefore, the similarity is solid dissolves or disappear. This is what you can see during the reaction. And the difference is during the dissolution or during the reactions, you will see the magnesium carbonate is fizz or it has effervescence because it's from CO2 gas. Magnesium ox hydroxide with HCl, you won't see any gas formation because it's just a normal acid-based neutralization from salt and water and no gas form. So no fizzing for magnesium hydroxide with acid, but magnesium carbonate you see okay, is fizz because CO2 formation. That's the difference. That's all for this question. Thank you.